Hello everyone, I'm Alana, this is Kana, we're Inside Gaming, and this is a preview! Huh? You put a P there. Uh? Did you use a ruler? No. That's incredible. Just scissors. That's incredible. Uh, Just okay. my mouth. <laughs> Just ripped it to shreds. I have many questions. <laughs> Today we are talking about a game called Outriders that we just got to play about three hours of. Long time. -ish. Yeah, it was yeah. a long time for a preview. It's from a studio called People Can Fly, who were previously a part of Epic Games, meaning they worked on honestly like lots of Epic stuff, mm -hmm. but Unreal Tournament, and Bulletstorm, and Gears of War, which is a franchise that I really love. And I did not expect this game to play so much like Gears of War based on how it looks. <laughs> it's very Gears of War-y, but not in a way that's like derivative. I don't think. No, no. No, I mean, I think it's a good jumping off point with cover and reload mechanics. Even and the running? The way yes, that yeah. Is it like, like blurs ability. a little bit, but mm -hmm. it also doesn't turn you into like that kind of locomotive thing yeah, that not, Gears does you're not where you can't steer. not weirdly motion sick with yeah. these little blob boys running around with their tiny feet. If you haven't seen the trailers, hopefully we're showing you gameplay footage of right now that we captured at this brilliant event. It looks like more Mass Effect-y than Gears of War-Z. It's definitely a dark sci-fi and it is a three-player co-op RPG shooter in terms of like different mechanics. There are Destiny vibes, there are Diablo vibes, there are the Division vibes. Oh, yes, very much so. A lot of all of those things, but in a three-player co-op shooter, it is by no means like an, an MMO light. With Gears of War mixed in there with the cover system and the running especially, so it's definitely something that feels like it's taken a lot of good chunks from other things and then put them together. Yeah. And I'm into that. I like that tonally it pulls a lot of sci-fi things from Mass Effect. And Andromeda, Andromeda specifically, sure. yeah. with the new planet, even the vehicles you see in the beginning yeah. has deep Andromeda vibes. It feels like someone went to see Annihilation and they were like, this could be cooler. What about Beefcakes? It felt to me like a little rage too with some like tonal and story stuff For and sure. Mad Maxi, Apocalypse, a lot going on. But I feel like it is distinct. It knows what its vision is and I understand it. So mm -hmm. I'm into that. We'll get into the story a little bit later because that is one of the lesser important parts of this game to me, I think. One of the things that I'm like, it's there. Yeah. You, you did it, but. but more complex than it needs to be. Yeah, probably. So there are three classes that were playable this week, mm -hmm. though I think there are four in total. We don't know what the fourth one is. I think it might be ice, because I saw that in the trailer. That checks Someone out. Someone being frozen. Um, Can't say for sure they didn't tell us. Time's to be telling, as <laughs> they, I they, always say. Time be doing what the it time is. Time to be, it'll be telling the future. When is the time? Who be knows? Telling. I played as the trickster class, and I was actually pretty excited to talk to you about the classes that you got to play as now, because we didn't talk about them at the event. The trickster is sort of like an assassin. From how long we played, we had three abilities that we unlocked over time. My first ability was playing on an Xbox One controller, hit the left bumper, and it just like slices people in half. If okay. they have full health, it will show you that animation, slow them down enough for you to shoot them and kill them. If they're low on health, it will completely kill them. They kind of like explode. Yeah. It's pretty dope. It looks incredible. Incredibly cool. It's like this giant blue, like smoky, flamey thing. That's cool. Yeah, I really liked it. I had different powers, and then the cutscenes, their eyes just glowed and they had like a kinetic ability. And then it was totally different things in gameplay. I think the cutscenes are largely the same. There is a character creator though, so. Yes, yeah. It did look different. There's something really cool about playing with two other people and watching them also figure out what their abilities are because I feel like these abilities are very well visually and sound designed. They oh. look and sound dope. So when I was doing mine and I was like, oh my god, guys, check out what I just did. Like I unlocked something where I could teleport behind someone and then attack them from behind, and that was how I was uh, regenerating my health as the trickster. Very cool. Yeah, so oh, you very sp cool. specifically have to basically get a, I think it's a stealthy kill up close to be able to get your health back, which was just super fun. And figuring that out and watching the pyro on our team figure out that she could do crazy fire stuff and be like, watch this. And then we're all just like watching this dope magic happen is very cool for a co-op game, I think. I did not get to play co-op. Play I played largely yourself. single player, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's so sad. Well, I don't really have a lot of friends growing oh, up. No, I, the people in my little uh, pod seem to be doing their own thing. And I was like, well, Alana's gonna get some multiplayer experience. I'll just focus on other okay. stuff. I'm so. actually very interested in how it works as a single player experience. Pretty well. Do you want me to talk about the other two yes. powers first? And then I'll weave in yes. the single player experience. So there are two others, Pyromancer Fire and a Devastator, which is kind of like a rock the thing sort of he uh, a tank. power. He tank. I played more Devastator because I did the first run through solely as that. And I liked it a lot. It's like very close up combat. So you get the three abilities. One is like you just slam the ground and it kind of just raises a bunch of rocks and mm -hmm. then wipes out the guys in front of you and kills a lot of them. There's one where you just cover yourself in like an exoskeleton, like mm -hmm. a shield made of rock and you buff your defense that way. The last one, you rise up into the air backwards mm. and you have almost like a drone-like view and then it highlights one and you just slam down and then they like die or explode. I don't know if there's like a missing animation or something. It felt a little like I couldn't tell what exactly was happening. I think it's from when I hit the ground. How did you feel about playing as the Devastator? It felt good. Sometimes in cover shooters, I feel like that's all I can do. Yeah. And it was nice to be like, oh, I can just pop 
pop out, throw myself into the fray, yeah. and feel free to get into it and then jump back in. Often too, because the regens are so quick on the those cool abilities. The cooldowns are incredible. Yeah, yeah I that's don't know great. how fast it is. Like I don't recall seeing a second timer, but it's super quick. It doesn't show you a second timer, but you can go to the settings and it'll tell you the second mm, timer. So it tells you how long it takes to implement the skill and then how long to cool down. I think the first ability for Devastator was immediate usage, 13 second cooldown, yeah. which is really quick. Yeah, it does mean that this game, I think, has a really interesting gameplay loop in that it basically is at odds with itself, but it works. So when you're in cover, because it is largely a cover shooter, like Gears of War, you very much have to duck down and you're gonna get shot at, you have yeah. to wait for enemies to pop up. The AI is pretty good. There are some enemies that run at you, like Psychos. Berserkers, there's some smart grenade enemies. Oh yeah, lots of grenades. Lots, lots of, of those. grenades. But then nice at the same time, you have all of your magical abilities, which mm -hmm. I don't know what the term they used for it was. Altered. altered you're an abilities. altered person. Uh, but then there's also captains that also have powers, but they're not altered. Though. Lots to learn. <laughs> yeah. But basically you have to use those close up. And that is also how each of the classes, I believe, other than the pyro, regenerates their health. Like I said, it's fully at odds with itself. And it makes you constantly think about when am I going to use this? Who am I going to use this on? If there's a larger group I was using this ability that Trickster has that basically is this giant orb that slows everyone inside of it down dramatically. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, also slows down bullets. So like if you stand inside it and people try to shoot you through it, the bullets will be slowed down coming towards you. Or you could try to trap all of them in it, okay. go outside and shoot them from the outside. Super cool. It just gave me things to think about where I would be like, okay, there's a big group. I'm going to run over there. I'm going to swap to my shotgun. I'm going to use this. I'm going to take them all out really quickly. And then while that's cooling down, I might go kill someone just really quick to get some health back and then go back into cover. It is cool how it makes you think on your feet, which this being sort of having like looter shooter sensibilities, you will be replaying things a lot and think it's valuable to have multiple ways to tackle a problem. So like if I wanted to, I could have just shot my way through the entire demo. But I did really get into it. And uh, you learn how the abilities work together. Because you know, you walk into an area in Gears of War and you're like, oh, this is a fight. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fight. Yeah. It's cool that you're like, not just going to plan out which cover to take. Although Pyro is a little more long range, which yes. I did not realize at first. Oh, really? Yeah, because I had just been playing the Devastator for so long that I was really getting into it with Pyromancer. And it was early, so I wasn't really getting punished. But I felt I was like, something's not quite right here. And then I started firing stuff off from way back. Two of the abilities are like a fire wave. And then one, you just see a line of like embers on the yeah. ground. And then it just like pops them yeah. like a fiery pimple. It's very cool. Very, very satisfying. Yeah. And it, it damages and knocks back the guys around them. And then I think that heals you yeah. in some way, right? Yeah, I yes. believe Pyro is the only one that has a ranged heal, which is yeah. also cool. And playing as a team, that was something that we had to consider. Because also, if you're using your abilities on the same enemy, one will cancel the other out. You can't use them at the same time for something. Oh. So you have to be like, I'm going to use this on this guy. You use that on that guy. Okay, sometimes that makes they sense. will basically like merge and one will get priority kind of. But you both lose the cooldown. Yeah, you both lose the cooldown, okay. but you would waste it. But it does tell you. It would be like resisted, depending on basically, I think, who got in first. So there's some strategy there too. And I think Pyro having to hang back is probably like yeah. a smart way to make that more of a sniper class. That makes sense. Which our Devastator kept using the sniper. I don't know why. What's wrong with you? I definitely, just playing in single player, had a few more headaches with Pyro than mm -hmm. I did with Devastator. I can see how that would be a good support class. Because yeah. one of the abilities is you can like freeze everybody in their place. Yeah, turn them uh, to ash. Yeah, you turn them to ash briefly. At one point it's like, you spread out ash. And that's the description. Like, I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what ash is. What is spreading it, ash? What does spreading ash? Asthmatics Spre are going to hate it. Spread that ash. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the three classes. From what I saw, I liked all of them. I definitely liked playing as Trickster. That's, um, that one seems fun. They seem like they have a fair amount of variety. I'm impressed with them, but of course you can also fully customize a lot of the other things about yourself, like armor and weapons function pretty similarly to the division. Maybe they'll end up functioning more like Destiny. I'm not really sure, but there were like green item drops and white item drops. Green was slightly rarer. I mean, the menu is very similar to Destiny in that it's like, this weapon is better than that one. I'm like, okay, equip. But uh, not a ton of weapon variety was my thing. We had a shotgun, a sniper rifle, a regular rifle, and pistols that you permanently have on you in case you run out of ammo that have infinite ammo. Mm -hmm. But that's it. It's pretty basic stuff. That was one of the things about Division 2 that I had a little trouble with. Once you get really far into it, it was like some variety, which I'm hoping happens with this. I think the most interesting weapon I got was uh, an auto shotgun. Yeah. That was like, almost looked like an SMG. Everyone said that though, which is like one of the, the points about that experience is everyone who's playing it is like, did you get that auto shotgun? If we all like the same weapon, I feel like that's kind of an issue with weapon balance. Yeah. It means that we're all being forced to play the same way because it's the way that makes the most sense rather than tailoring the game to our experience. It was really early though. We were True. at the first three hours of the game, literally the opening 
of the game. Yeah, so we, we played the whole prologue. I hope they get more creative because I, I mean, one of the things I really like about Destiny is that people have totally different loadouts depending mm -hmm. on their playstyle, and something can do more damage than something else. But you'd be like, yeah, but I like it for this. Yeah. So. For each class, there's the subset of like a skill tree, mm -hmm. which I think functions with maybe the melee skill. I don't know. It's kind of complicated, but it's a lot of branching and interweaving things you can unlock. I'm wondering if that will offset any blandness that yeah. comes with the weapons. Although they did, they made a point of showing us that the weapon designs for like skins do get really do cool. get really cool. Yeah. This one with like a twisted wood around it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all very biological. Yeah. Like it all looks like everything's covered in plants. And the same goes for when we saw late game armor. It looks like it's alive. It's very cool. Whereas yeah. at the start, you know, my squad all picked up a hood and everyone equipped the hood because that was the strongest thing that we had so far. So it was, yes. everyone looked the same. I did wrote duster just as a big word. You wrote the word duster? Yeah, I got a duster, the big leather jacket. Oh, that's cool. I didn't get that. Yeah, short sleeves. Nice. To the knees. Great. That's the way it, I love that's that. the breeze. <laughs> Real quick before we jump off customization. So they gave us three abilities per class, yes. but you can unlock eight and then swap out whichever three you want, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, so you have three active at all times, but you can unlock way more and then swap them in again, similarly to Destiny. I feel like the loot in general was like, I was picking it up consistently. I was excited to pick it up and get new stuff. Didn't quite see enough of a reason to have different loadouts to everyone else. And I hope that as you get further into the game, that changes. But right now, that's all we know is that everyone really likes that shotgun. So do we want to talk a little bit about the story? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, I think I wrap my mind okay. around it a little so, bit. So, yeah, they call it a dark sci-fi fantasy. Dark sci-fi. They leave Earth. They go to a planet called Enoch. There's two ships. One of them doesn't make it. The other ship is stuck in orbit, but there are people who drop down who are the Outriders, who are there to basically make sure that they can live on that planet. They get there. There's this weird storm. You, the protagonist, go back into cryosleep. Still not really sure why that happened. Mm -hmm. You wake up 30 years later, mm -hmm. and I guess like a lot of the humans have already um, established their bases there, but the world is, is kind of crappy and not at all the second Earth that they expected. That's there are ten fingers. big monsters who want to fight you. There are a lot of humans who want to fight you. I'm Which not entirely sure. also, in a way, monsters. Hmm. It's profound. Society. We live in one. <laughs> I wasn't really following why I was fighting the people that I was fighting, other than like you show up, these people don't like you, they don't like Outriders, and then you kind of like get into a hub where they're more cool with you, and then you just kind of start questing. It kind of just borrows buzzwords and tropes and stuff. Cryo sleep, colonizing a new planet, sci-fi storm, and like these are all things we've seen a lot also in the past couple of years specifically. But then when you come out, it's like, oh, the world's f up. Yeah. Like, look how fucked up the world is. There's yeah. dead bodies on chains, and then there's insurgents, which is kind of like general term for the guys outside of their society. Yes. And I think you're the last outrider. Very coalition of gears. Yeah, multiple <laughs> time jumps, which once you get your mind around, are not too complicated. I was playing third. I was like, uh, I'm glad I don't have to care about this too much. I didn't much, care at all. I, was no. like, I mean, I uh -huh. appreciate the world building effort that they put in that prologue, which we weren't allowed to record. They certainly put effort in. There are characters yes. who are established as personalities. Um, but I was not particularly into it. So yeah, the story was not a strong suit to me, and I also found the protagonist, I played as a male, to be extremely bro -y. He was like a Jason Momoa as Aquaman type. It's just like a B-movie, like, you're not here for this. We know you're here for the abilities and the gunplay and the power-ups and stuff. There are puns. They're having fun with it. They are. Because like, it's not like Doesn't just bad. Doesn't take itself bad. too seriously. Yeah, yeah, that's part of what reminded me of Rage 2, is a main character that's like, you've got all these powers, and also you're not very interesting. Um, I wrote down some of the like cheesy lines. Excellent. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. This is a good trope, like when the character gets the powers and then people are afraid of them, they're like, I could get used to this. Did you do the hot tea that? side quest? I think I did, we only had two available and I did both. Yes, yeah, okay. You're like yep. walking off to confront this threat and then someone's like, okay, for a hot tea? Yeah. And then it lets you stay on the menu where you can choose the dialogue option that says accept or refuse. And I waited and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, there are sure. dialogue options. That's worth noting. From my understanding, those don't actually change the outcome of the conversations at all. You're just asking questions for more information and you could refuse it and just go, accept, do quest if you want. I don't yep. think it had any actual impact on the world. Generally, when you get into a cutscene with, if you're playing with a squad of three, you'll all just see the cutscene with your character and you'll choose your own dialogue options rather than, you know, some games where a host is the one who's choosing those options. So mm -hmm. it's all integrated really smartly. I think all of the, the multiplayer uh, facets of it work really well. In closing, any pros and cons you wanted to talk about? 
talking about? I feel like we've covered a lot of it. One pro that I enjoy is the difficulty system being linked to like a world tier, mm -hmm. I think is cool, because it's really transparent. If you look through the menus about what changes, and it's like enemy spawn rates, it's pretty clear and you can change it on the fly. It defaults to the hardest world tier that is available to mm -hmm. you. For certain points, I'm like, if I wanted to, I could just shift the world tier around depending yeah. on who I'm playing with, or maybe what if kind you're just trying to do have. something more basic and you don't want the, the fight, because they are a little right. bit, some enemies are a little bit bullet spongy, so. Yes, definitely. Yeah, well, Especially if you're alone, playing as the Pyromancer, like part of having a team, I'm sure, is helping to draw fire. Like yeah, literally, we, there was that part with fire tornadoes where I was just getting. That, just that was probably the hardest part of the game. Pretty tough, us. yeah. Yeah, there was one part where I literally had one of my squad mates go out and draw fire, and then I would use my assassin skills on everyone while they were trying to go after him. So. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah it, there are definitely tactics available with that system combined with the magic. I just, I think that is a really cool system, and that's probably my biggest pro is I really like the combination of those two very different things, and that it doesn't force you to do those things. They're there and they work together and they will benefit you if you do, so it makes it appealing. It's something that I don't feel like I've really seen executed very well before. And yeah, my biggest con is probably that I really didn't care for the character very much, but yeah, I mean, I, there was some story stuff, but I mean, I'm still like interested enough if it takes it in an interesting place. Again, this is the demo, it's very early. I do also need to mention a bunch of crashes, occasional bugs. I also but got of a course, crash. Yeah, it's a preview build. It's very uh, early. Game is actually coming out holiday 2020 on PS5. This is my first time playing a game that's coming on PS5. Oh, yeah, same. Very yeah. cool. Xbox Series X, PC, Xbox One, and PS4. And it is pretty. It's colorful. I guess there are areas that are a lot more grayscale, Gears of Warsy, also. But yeah, for the most part, I was pretty impressed with the difference of environment. Oh, and I really like the waypoint system. Yes. Something Destiny does not do well. It is a winding white line that glows and shows you which way to go. Basically, That's like it. if you played Fable, Fable 2 and 3, I think, did that. It just gives you this literal line that you just follow right in front of you on the ground. It's, it's great. great. Big Cause... fan, knew exactly where I was going. I've been lost in Destiny before. That's pretty much our closing thoughts. Let us know if you have any uh, questions in the comments below, and I'm sure we'll revisit the game when we get more info about it. But for the three hours we played, I liked it. I'm, I'm interested. interested to see more. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And we played Doom Eternal. We did. It's good. It is very good. Yeah, we got to play about three hours. Uh, I also played 20 minutes back at E3 last year. I did so not, they would not let me in. Yeah. You did get to play three hours this time. I did get to uh, play, yep. How do we feel overall? Really good. I mean, it's the, it's the same basic game mm -hmm. as 2016.